We recently released support for TriCaster TC2 Elite, and that's what I'll demonstrate in this video. Now, TriCaster support is not a new thing to us. We have had TriCaster TC Mini or TriCaster Mini and TC1 support for quite a while. But with TC2, we had two chances. That is to support some of the awesome new features of TC2 and also of our game on the existing TriCaster support. So all of you guys with TriCasters out there will get something new today. And another amazing fact about what we're doing is that we don't have a TriCaster in-house. The one we're working with today is in Switzerland and I am in Copenhagen. So thanks to Corona, well, something good came out of something bad, right? Thanks to that, we are used to do remote productions. By the way, check out our YouTube channel for videos about remote production involving our panels, how we can control stuff across the internet. But today we're doing exactly that because this panel talks to a TriCaster TC2 Elite in Switzerland. The same with my laptop where I have a team viewer session of that TriCaster. So that just shows and proves the whole point that remote production is reality with your Skahoi gear. Thanks to Jerome and Visuals in Switzerland, our faithful customers for helping us out. And not only today, they have also allowed us access to that TriCaster during our development period. And that is a role model for how you, if you have equipment that you're not gonna ship to Denmark for integration, can actually allow us access over the internet so we can get our development and integration work done thanks to you. This is how we work with a lot of customers and we are very thankful for that. In today's demonstration, I'll go through a number of things about our integration. I'll touch on the DVE control. We also have PDC control through the TriCaster. So for instance, we can uh, move things around in the DVEs. We can, um, it's called pan and scan. We have uh, the ability, in other words, to manipulate the DDRs in the TriCaster uh, graphics and so forth, along with PDC cameras. We can also look at how A to D layers can be managed from the panel. We'll be looking at media playback and uh, control and finally also support for the outputs. The way I'm going to go about it is by following the logic of the panel's menu. So on the top row of buttons here, I have a menu that will take you through ME selection, menu, uh, output selection, we have media uh, control here, DVE, PVC, and finally audio, which I'll also show you uh, a few things about. So that's how we'll be looking at it. Starting out with ME control. So what you're looking at right now is us being on ME0, the program preview row here in the TriCaster. So we have it uh, preview, of course, on, on, on this row here. If we move on here, you see uh, with the shift key held down, we have DDRs. And again, as Skahoy is typically doing it, we have nice OLED displays that shows you the name picked up from the video switching system behind. So if I choose DDR4 here, then it is uh, very clear to me that that's what I got because the display showed it. So that's awesome. Now, um, up here, we have something new, transition selection. That's new on TriCaster. So uh, we have various transition types that I can select here. And uh, if I go to transition type seven, for instance, which is like a wipe, we can use the T-bar to make that wipe happen on the screen. You can see that it is now going from the right to upper left. And uh, then I have a few modifiers I can select. So in this case, I am now uh, reversing the uh, transition. And uh, if I take this one, for instance, I have a ping pong um, or flip transition going on. So those modifiers uh, exist here. The only thing which is not new is the fact that you can grab a still. So if, if you, for whatever reason, want to grab a still, you can do it on this one and it ends up in your uh, DDR down here. You, uh, that's the thumbnail right there, which I just captured with this little button. So that was about transitions. And this is true for all the MEs that we can access. And the TC2 has uh, eight uh, MEs uh, that we can work with. You see them here in the uh, TriCaster UI. Uh, ME1, 2, 3, and so forth. And one of the new things is that you can set an ME up to work with four layers. And if you do so, you sacrifice your transition ability. So you can see, but, but instead you get compositional um, flexibility. And that's what we see for ME number one and two. There we have created a four layer setup and now we have ME3, 4, and, and so on uh, set up in various other ways. In this case, AB, so like program and preview. 
So for instance, uh, we are currently at ME6. Let's move on to ME6. So I use this button up here to go there. Now notice if you haven't, if you don't know, Skyhoy panels are quite clever because I'm not just cycling up to six. I actually have a four way button here that allow me kind of action as an encoder to go forth and back all in one button, not two buttons, just a single button allows you to press the edges and then move forth and, forth and back in a parameter like this one. So that's pretty cool. And now that I'm on ME6, uh, we can see the reflection of, of, of ME6 here and I'm able to manipulate sources like on the screen. So that's pretty natural. Let's move back to one of the ME's that uh, we um, where we have four layers and uh, that would be ME number one. So we'll just go back to that one. So uh, what we see right here is that camera number one is selected for A and B. So if I press camera three, then we get that, uh, sorry, for the B track here. And if I want to go to C and D, I just press this button and now I see the reflection of the source selection on uh, C and D. If I hold down shift key, I can, for instance, um, take DDR4 uh, and uh, select that one for a layer of uh, MEC on ME, no, not MEC, layer, let's say layer C on uh, ME1. Um, okay, over on the right side on the TriCast, we also have four keys. So it's like you can have eight layers going for your um, uh, MEs in, in TriCast. That's pretty amazing. And of course, they are controlled on the right side of the controller in this case. This is an Airfly Pro, one of our most popular switching controllers. And um, so the ME you select here will affect the tr transitional section over here. So let's just take a look at that. And uh, if I press this button, for instance, then I have uh, I get the equivalent of an auto transition for the first key here. So you see uh, it faded in. Now I'm going to press it for the second one. And you see it's, it's fading in right there. If I hold down the shift key, then I can also take them off directly. So that's like toggle on off. Um, and finally up here, I have next transition ability. So I can log in uh, my downstream keys here to uh, follow the transition of uh, auto. And, uh, and so on. If I hold down this one, you can also uh, toggle background on and off. So the whole management of keys along with transitions is done the way you know it from uh, this section over here, along with the shift key to take you between types of transition, like take and, and auto. Now we'll be moving on to looking at outputs. So this is also something new in um, the, the TriCaster here that we can control this or in our integration. And it's pretty simple. So if we go to the interface here, the outputs are managed from here and here. So on regular or previous TriCaster models, you had output one to four. And now we also have five to eight on the TC2. Both of those aspects can be controlled. And right now we are on output number one. So you can see that as I'm pressing these buttons, I'm also changing the delegation of output number one on uh, the UI of the TriCaster. So the outputs are like auxiliary outputs and uh, are simply managed on this row. Yes, you have shift access to additional sources so we can uh, assign additional uh, outputs um, from the panel as well using the shift key. Using again the button here to select forth and back, we can go to other outputs and that could be like output number four where we could select uh, mix number three instead of mix number four. And you also see the feedback on the panel. We um, tend to always have that if possible in the API. We want to know what is the current setting in the equipment we control. And then we can move on to output number six. And then if we move that, yeah. Guess what? We are also uh, controlling what output number six actually shows us. Let's go to camera number two here. And now let's go back to mix number two as it was currently set up. So that's also in place. So that, that was outputs. It's something new in our integration. And we support all of those that you find in the TC2. The next thing we'll be looking at is media control. So if you move on to the next key, and by the way, notice how clever this little menu is made because you have like home, which is your ME section, then it says output. When you get there, you can actually select the output with the same key. So that's a nice little UI flexibility that I really love about the way this configuration is made. And on media, of course, we select the uh, media bank. So this is essentially the DDR. Now that is clear if you look in this display that the tiny title will reveal that this is not just play, stop and forward. It is so for DDR number one. So the disk recorder number one, which is what we are currently looking at in this corner of our little universe, 
we have DDR number one, and that's where we are right now. But we could, of course, address DDR number two, three, and four. And then if we go to number five, uh, it's actually controlling the, uh, the sound here, uh, which is again apparent from the labels. So once again, we are using the labels in the displays to show you the context of the stuff that we are controlling. If we press play, you'll see that we are now playing back in the media player here and um, the, the, the clip that we are currently located on, we can go to, uh, you know, forward and backward. So if I press this button, I go to the next clip. I can also press this one to go to the start or to the previous clip once again. I have uh, autoplay enabled, so if I transition to the DDR, I uh, automatically see the play, uh, clips start playing. And uh, of course, this is a toggle function, and I can also set it in single mode, which means that if I have a clip, like if I move forward to this one and we let that play to the end, it will stop having single mode enabled. It's gonna stop after playing back this clip instead of moving on to the next one. Or it's in this case, it's cycling, it's looping because the looping function is enabled here. So let's try to disable that. And there we see it stop uh, right after the playback. So that's generally just playback control from your DDRs. And uh, you can also skip forth and back between the different playlists in the DDR. So for instance, if I press uh, next preset here, then what actually happens is that I am going to number two and I could go to back to, to number one right there. So I see the previous six clips that I have in DDR number one, but that's also a part of this integration. The next thing we want to look at is DVE control on the Airfly Pro with the TriCaster. And if I press the DVE menu, I get to a place where I can select eight different DVE channels to work with. And that maps over to the four layers and the four keys on one of the MEs. I am currently, if we look here, on ME number one. So that's the context that I'm adjusting the MEs inside. And I would like to, um, and I've also brought it up. So you see it here on preview. This is my ME number one output that we have right here. So we have a composition using the DDR one, two, and three as uh, sources for A, B, and C. And um, the D layer is actually not used because the background is this one DDR three. So we just put that in to have a composition that is easy to understand. Now, what we could do with the DVE here in this case is to say, okay, so DDR number one, which is the one we are currently uh, at, um, sorry, layer number A, with the DVE, I want to adjust that a little bit, uh, do some cropping and positioning of the um, a picture in picture that I'm seeing of this uh, nice guy who is probably on a call from somewhere. By the way, did you know that TriCaster has some awesome feature to bring in Zoom and Skype and all kinds of different calls for our reality here in 2021? That's really awesome and you should check it out. And of course, we are able to work with those features as uh, you can see in this video. But let's try to uh, look at what we can do here. So if I'm um, using my four-way button, you see how I'm able to adjust the uh, X parameter of this. I can also adjust the Y. So you can really do these small tweaks to just get it in place with the panel. We can also rotate and uh, that's probably, I don't know if this is likely something I want to do. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, but I can do so. If, if I hold the lower edge as I um, just, uh, maybe I want to turn it ah, okay in the other way. So I'll just hold it down. You see the four way buttons are able to work with parameters in different directions. And now I want to move it a little bit down. So let me just use that key for this. Um, oh, sorry, I tried to reset the parameters. So um, it's probably not something you want to do live, but I can get it in place right there and then move it a little bit over to the X side. So um, finally, maybe I want to scale it a little bit and I can also do so on these keys and I can see the exact values here in the display. This all corresponds to the values that you find if you open this menu, you see the position zoom and um, rotational facts here are the same that you also see in my displays on the X, uh, sorry, Airfly Pro. And finally, we can do some cropping on the sides. So uh, let's just look at the left cropping and the right cropping here on this uh, picture. So I'm going to increase the left cropping a little bit and also increase the right cropping to get this. And now, of course, I want to size it up again. But you get the picture. We can adjust these parameters from the Airfly Pro or we can monitor the values they have from this one by uh, adjusting this. We can then move on to a, a different part of this composition, which would be the little uh, logo here from visuals. And um, we can um, work with the dimensions of that. So I just scaled it down a little bit and once again, move the position around. But as you can see, we have extended the integration with quite a lot 
more of these features. Next thing we want to look at is PDC control. And that is, thanks to TriCaster, not only a matter of cameras actually, it is also controlling like DDR sources as if it was a PDC camera. So that's pretty cool. And uh, in the, on the Afly Pro, we have a little section here with a joystick pad and a joystick, which, uh, sorry, zoom rugger, which is elastomer components. So um, they are great because they don't take up a lot of space. They, they make this surface still pretty compact because there's not like a, uh, something sticking out of the panel which is uh, vulnerable in some way. Uh, of course they also have limited precision so they are meant very much as a way to nudge things in place like um, an emergency uh, yeah, in context joystick where you can do things. So And they're actually surprisingly handy and useful in this case. So uh, what I want to do first is to uh, look at the, the, the camera. We actually do have a camera, PDC camera, which is currently on program. So if I recall a preset on that, you can see that this camera responds to it. And now I recall a different preset. That's from the Visuals office in Switzerland here. Uh, so that's just preset recall integrated on the panel for camera number one that uh, is on the TriCaster system. And if I want to um, adjust camera number one, I can use this encoder to select my camera. Why did we do it like that? Because we like this little section to be kind of independent of the rest. So instead of letting, letting the camera selection follow the source selection, we think that quite often it's just useful to be able to go to a specific camera or specific DV. Now I'm on camera number one. So you can also see how I'm able to use the joystick here to just nudge this camera around a little bit. And I can even do it. You can see I'm pretty slow on the movements here. If I press a little harder, then it's going quicker. So you have some level of uh, speed adjustments on this little joystick here. You can also zoom in and zoom out with the zoom rocker here. Again, it's uh, sensitive to how hard you press on it so that you can have different levels of speed. There's focus right here on this dial as well. So it's all pretty cool and nice. But what if I want to adjust the DVE? Now, just next to me, we had um, like DVE number one. So we can also go backwards here. And the, um, let me see. Uh, I can see here I'm currently on DDR number one. So if I want to do some uh, cropping and zooming, you can see that I'm actually doing that in my little call insert that we found right here. I am able to, to, to work around like a pan tilt zoom camera on this source with the joystick pad and the zoom rocker. And I think that's pretty cool. All thanks to TriCaster giving me like simultaneous API access to any source regardless of whether it's actually a physical PC camera or if it's a digital uh, version of a, a DDR. And final thing will be looking at audio. Now, I have both good news and bad news for you guys. And uh, the good news is that we can, um, and, and the neutral news is that we can still adjust audio sources. Again, with the amazing four-way buttons, we're able to do some adjustments to audio. And let me just show you where that is in TriCaster. So on the audio mixer right here, we have uh, on, on audio source number one, you can see I'm able to adjust the value up and down. And it's also reflecting, of course, the value selected from the panel in the display. So you can always follow along with that. Now. I can also solo these sources. That's a new thing. So if I hold down my shift key, this turns into a solo row. So if I press this button, you see that I'm soloing input audio on, uh, audio on input number one. And I can um, do the same for some of the others here. That's pretty nice if I want to listen to individual channels and so on. So that's the good news adding solo to the audio control. The bad news, and this is what you will still have to wait for, is audio level metering on the panels and it's a matter of bandwidth and we are working on it and it will happen but you have to wait a little bit longer so what we wanted to do was to push out all these amazing new features to you where you have so extended control of tricasters and support for tc2 elite with the afly pro and all our other panels but we are still working on getting um, audio level metering out on our panels for you. It's a matter of bandwidth. It's a technical challenge that we need to find the right way to, to uh, handle. We already know how we want to do it, but we just can't bring it to you today. But we're working on it, rest assured. So thanks for watching this video. It has been a pleasure to go through all of this uh, stuff with you. It's, um, it's really a lot that I think we can present to you with this um, new integration. And there are a few things that we want to, um, to just let you know. Um, there are some 
previous configs that are affected because uh, audio mute has uh, moved to audio properties in the configuration and you need to be aware of that. So uh, ask our support if you are in, in doubt, but uh, stay aware of this. The order of sources has also changed. That's an, another necessity we needed to, um, to react to. And what it means is that if you just press update on your installation, you may get a non-functional uh, configuration. But there are ways to lock yourself down to the current configuration. If you just want to keep everything as it is, it works great, then you can, you can do so. It's, um, it, it's by using the firmware updater we have, um, and we can move over to this one. So if I bring up the firmware updater, I notice I'm connected with USB to my panel here. If you press this button, which you will be able to access if you enable something called expert mode. So expert mode gives you access to something where you can request specific versions of our software. This is a way for us to handle when things need to be broken. But you can lock yourself down to particular versions by opening this one up and then you type in 2.5.7 and that will give you the version that works with your current configuration. If you want to do things with the new one, if you're ready to reconfigure your panel or use a new configuration, then you can just go nuts and you can press the update firmware button on the very top, you'll get the latest. So just be aware that there are both scenarios. And that's basically the, um, uh, the disclaimers that I needed to bring you to make sure that you uh, act uh, responsibly to your installation, whether you want all of these new features, if you're ready for them today, or if you just want to hang on and wait for a while and uh, not mess up your current working uh, configuration. So be aware of that. But thanks for watching. And I hope this will be very helpful to you with all these new things we have done. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you uh, would like to subscribe to our channel that will keep you informed when you put out new stuff. And uh, if you have any comments and uh, things you want to share with us, you can put them in the comment field. Otherwise, see you in the next video.